All right, hello everyone. My name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I am the Adrenal Fatigue Recovery Ninja, and we are doing a Facebook Live um, on Q&As. Um, we talked about dietary intake, and we we're also talking about hormone rebalancing. So um, I'm not sure if you guys are getting this right now, if you can see this or not, um, but if you can and you're watching this, um, let me know. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a comment. Give me a hello. Give me something so that we can talk about this. Um, I, I'm seeing a lot of people um, ask questions about, uh, about their hormones, and I'm on bioidentical hormones, and what should I do because I can't balance them? I've had a surgical menopause or I had a, um, you know, I just hit menopause or I, um, I just on hormones and I'm not doing a good job. So that's one of the first things that I see. Um, the other things that I'm seeing are um, how do I eat? How do I balance my glucose? How do I go ketogenic? That's another thing that I see. And then questions in terms of um, what do my Dutch tests look like? What are my cortisol levels? All that type of stuff. So um, I didn't really have anything planned today. I just wanted to answer your questions. So if you're watching this and you want me to answer your questions, that's great. I can answer your questions and we can kind of go forward from there. Um, I just finished a um, actually a consult with someone and we were talking about her metabolic assessment in terms of how did her gastrointestinal health look, how did her, um, her, her liver and gallbladder health look, and the things that came up were her blood sugar. And she has a rheumatoid um, problem, she's got fibromyalgia, and um, she's dealing with um, a lot of pain. And so we were looking at her gastrointestinal system, we were looking at her liver, her gallbladder, her thyroid, and what came out was the fact that her adrenals were off and her, um, her what else were off? Her blood sugar levels were off. So, so you know, I talked to her about setting up a diet and, and I talked about two concepts. So a lot of people will say, well, should I go ketogenic or should I not? And I say, well, here's what I want you to learn. I want you to learn about refueling days and then restriction days. So when we're doing a refuel day, I want you to be at 150 grams of carbs. So that means, oh, I'm not very, not very clean, 150 grams of carbs. So I want you to be at about 150 grams of carbs on a refuel day. And when I was telling her the carbs, that should be things like um, starches, um, healthy grains. And when I say healthy grains, things that you know you don't react to, things that could be anti-inflammatory or not um, immune stimulating um, would be things like um, sulfur-based uh, grains, which buckwheat is awesome, um, things like that. Um, other things could be um, low, uh, let's say, brown, brown rice. But the thing is, if you're doing 150 on your refuel day, it doesn't take much before you're above that. Um, grains, starches, um, legumes, um, even things like um, fruits, you can go up to 150. And, and, and I don't mind that. On your restriction days, you're only keeping it to 50. And that's hard for a lot of people. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean it's ketogenic. This is not ketogenic. This is just becoming metabolically flexible. So we want to become metabolic flexibility. Ability. I want you to become metabolically flexible. So, so that means you need to, on your restriction days, keep your calories of grams of carbs to 50 grams. And that means starches, grains, legumes, fruits, and sugars. So what's free, free, is going to be veggies. Veggies are free. So anything that's green and leafy is going to be free. You're not going to count it towards your 50 or your 150. Um, another thing that I told her was you needed to be at 0.7 grams per lean pound of body weight. So if you weigh 200 pounds 
or let's use a better example. If you weigh 150 pounds and you are 20% body fat, that means you are 80% body lean. You are 120 pounds of lean weight and you want to keep at about 0 .7, 0 0.7 grams of that. So that would equal about 100 grams of protein. So figure out what your lean weight is, figure out what your total weight is, and figure out what the percentage is, and then figure out how much protein you should be having. That's really, really important. And then the remaining portion is gonna be from your healthy fats. So healthy fats could probably be, you know, if you're taking 1,500, 1,700 calories a day, you're gonna look at um, the difference being from healthy fats. So it typically looks like something like this. It looks like you're having 17 grams of carbs times three, if you're having three meals. Typically it's gonna be 20 to 30 grams, depending on how much you weigh, of protein times three. And then typically it's going to be, um, your fat is gonna be, say, 25 to 45 or more grams times three. That's what it's going to look like. That's going to be, of course, if we're doing 17 grams times three, that's only 50 grams and that's going to be a restriction meal. If you're doing a refuel meal, a meal, it's going to be 50 grams times three. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so anyways, um, I was going on a tangent here. I was waiting for someone to ask me a question and of course PJ did. So PJ, I'm going to ask, answer your question. You got a big one. Um, how do you know if you need bioidentical hormones after surgical menopause? I'm 48 and I've had surgery at 41 years old. My main symptoms are dizziness and insomnia. I've tried synthetic hormones as recently, and, and recently, I think you meant to say, and recently, and recently bioidenticals from a compounding pharmacy. I've changed my diet, I do a lot of yoga, and I don't take any other meds. I don't drink or smoke. Some women say to do high, uh, higher with the estrogen, and other people say the hormones could be causing my insomnia. I've been diagnosed with advanced adrenal fatigue. Okay, so I'm going to read that one more time. So how do you know if you need bioidentical hormones after surgical menopause? So I would ask why you had surgical menopause. Uh, I think you read, told me about that, but you know, you don't just have surgical menopause for no reason. Maybe there's uh, fibro fibroids or there's, um, you know, endometriosis or I don't know, but something caused you to have a surgical menopause in the first place, which I'd be wanting to address. I wouldn't just be saying, okay, let's fix everything. We took out the female tissues and let's just put you on hormones. Why did you have to have the surgical menopause in the first place? Um, then um, my main symptoms are dizziness and insomnia. So dizziness could be a bunch of things. It could be an anemia issue. It could be some of the lymphatic issues and the inflammatory issues that may have caused fibroids or um, polycystic ovaries or caused um, uterine whatever. I don't know. Um, or endometriosis or whatever was caused was the reason. Um, the, the same reason could be causing the dizziness. Um, it, we, I look at um, oxygen concentration I look at um, your ability to, to utilize iron and form nice, healthy red blood cells. I want to know if there's other inflammatory markers. Um, is there iron deficiencies? Um, how are you stabilizing your glucose? Um, we're not even talking about hormones yet. Um, insomnia. Insomnia could be a lot of things. Inflammation, glucose problems, uh, methylation and making B12 and being able to go down a serotonin pathway. Gut microbes that keep you up at night. Liver detox issues that don't, don't work properly. Gallbladder issues. Um, what's going on with um, your ability to break down tryptophan and make serotonin? Um, are we missing cofactors? There's so many things that bioidenticals aren't going to fix. Um, besides which, what is looking? What do you look? What have your um, your tests look like? And when I say that, I mean, did you do a a, uh, a genetic test? Number one, because maybe there are some methylation issues, and you are having problem with detoxing. You're having problems with breaking down hormones. Your problems with neurotransmitters and repairing tissues and fighting off infections. Maybe there's that issue. So have you done a genetic test? Number one. Number two, have you done an organic acid test? Have you looked at your genetic? 
pathways uh, in terms of dopamine and serotonin? Are there mitochondrial issues? Are you not um, filling out Krebs cycle and you're B deficient or you have some cofactors that are missing or you have some genetic SNPs in those areas? Um, is there a microbial overgrowth? Is there candida yeast or C. diff? Um, do you have oxalates? Are you deficient in your glutathione pathways? None of those things require proper hormones or at least bioidenticals to fix that. So, so hopefully that answers your question, PJ, because um, because it's not just about bioidentical. So would you, have you looked at a genetic test? Have you looked at an organic acid test? Have you looked at um, a Dutch test, which is a four-point urine test? Have you looked at a Dutch test plus a saliva test plus a blood test? I mean, whenever I work with my patients, we do all three. We look at your genetics, we look at your organics, that's besides the, the hormones, and then we do your urine, we do your blood, and we do your saliva. And we see all of these things. I'd wanna know, how are you breaking down estrogen in phase one? Is it going down towards the unhealthy pathway and you're just getting more estrogen? Are you going down towards another unhealthy pathway and that's because of candida growth? Are you not going down the healthy pathway because that maybe there's an iron deficiency? If you're not doing that very well, how's phase two? Is there a genetic problem there? Is there a methylation problem there? Um, what did the genetic SNPs look like? Are you high or are you low? What's the testosterone? Is it aromatizing? Um, are you absorbing healthy fats? What's your cholesterol levels at? All of that doesn't have to do with getting on bioidentical hormones. So I hope that answers your question, PJ. Hello, Jill. Hope you're well. Um, I think we talked a long time ago, right? And then tell me if my message, my crazy memory is right. Um, something about a dog and um, moving to Florida or, or seeing someone in, in Florida. I don't remember exactly, but that's, what my, that's how my memory works. Um, Hey Steve, I hope you're well. Um, Kelly, our, our bio, bio, I think you're meaning identical. Our biogenetical, it's bioidentical. Our bioidentical hormones safe to use to balance hormones. So hopefully you just watch what I said. They can be safe. You know, don't get me wrong. Like you, you, a lot of women can do very well on, on these hormones, but are you looking upstream to find out why you need to be on the hormones? Is there an absorption issue? Are you getting enough healthy fats? Is your glucose level stable? Are you under a lot of stress? Um, are your hormones not working in terms of your adrenals are stressed and your thyroid's not doing a good job? Is there any infections? Um, how's your liver cleansing and is it detoxing and is it removing? All of these things. So they can be safe um, and they could be a good stopgap um, for people that are really suffering. Like I say, you triage, like you go to the hospital, you break your arm, knock on wood. Um, you want them to give you something to you know, kill the pain, um, but you also need to go to surgery and you need to fix the arm. Same kind of thing. <clears throat> if, you're, if you're really struggling with your hormones and your libido and your, your moods and your um, focus and your concentration and your, your ability to regenerate and just feel lively, um, then maybe you can get a, a, a bioidentical short-term um, protocol while you go to surgery, so to speak, and fix the upstream problems. I hope that made six. Uh, I had cysts on my ovaries and caused from benzos and antidepressants, I believe. So, so again, you know, I know that when you have the having the problems with antidepressants, then I know then there is a neurotransmitter issue, and potentially that's because of a glucose not being stable issue, and that's a um, a genetic polymorphism and not being able to absorb and utilize B12 and methylfolate properly, not being able to repair and regenerate your tissues effectively, um, also not being able to make and break neurotransmitters effectively. So uh, let me ask you, if all that stuff is going on, is bioidentical hormones going to fix that? That's, that's the question I would ask you. Hi, Dr. Joel. Hi, Bonnie. Um, I'm having major issues with high potassium foods and even oatmeal. I, it acts just like sleeping pills and makes me feel horrible. Any thoughts? Thank you so much for all you do. Well, thank you very much for being a loyal listener. Um, so my thoughts are I'm having high, I'm having major issues with high potassium foods. So what are, so they make me sleep and makes me feel horrible. So those high potassium foods are probably high sugared food too, and that's causing some insulin resistance. So um, my guess is it's not just the potassium per se. Um, it, it's probably the fact that if you're eating oatmeal and you, eat, you, you go over your 
carb threshold, um, you secrete a lot of insulin and that just makes you sleep and you're not getting food inside the cell and that's causing high triglycerides, high LDLs, high cholesterol. I'd want to know about that, um, how well you're balancing your glucose, if there's other issues with absorption. Um, but that's the first thing I think of. I don't think of necessarily potassium per se. Um, I think about stabilization of your glucose and cell membrane function is what I would think of, Bonnie. Hey, Melissa, hope you're well. I, I know you were supposed to come to Orlando. I never know if you did or not. Um, I love that name, Rosberg Dev. Um, Tomas, my friend, um, MTHFR, is this a genetic test? I'll do this next if so. It is a genetic test. It's the Ancestry.com, and it's one enzyme of... 23,000 enzymes that you need to understand or at least are significant to know about probably about 40 to 50 to 60 of them are um, you go to ancestry.com I should be getting a, 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 a referral fee but I don't um, and ancestry.com is the way we use that now it's a $69 test sometimes on sale um, but it's also $99 and don't get fancy you just need the raw data which means the basic test and then a nerd like me will read it and go over it and tell you what's going on um, so, Melissa, I'm having dizzy, dizziness a lot of the day. Any thoughts? The first thing I would think of is oxygen. Thyroid function, cellular hypothyroidism, re ratios of T3 to reverse T3 or free T3 to reverse T3. Are you dealing with a major infection? Are we looking at parasites? Are we looking at um, a liver thing? How are we cleansing? What's going on with stress? That type of stuff. That's what I'd be looking at. Um, Kelly, yes, bioidenticals. Um, yes, I know your, your spelling, mis spelling was off. Um, just had a panel taken. Maybe uh, you will have to review. Well, maybe I will. Um, hey, Jenny, hope you're well. I'm going to wave to you. You have a little button where I can wave to you, so hopefully you got that. Um, beautiful pictures, by the way. Dr. Joel, the best. I highly recommend him. He's got your back for sure. Thanks, Dr. Edeling. Hope you're doing well. Um, Melissa, yes, coming next Tuesday, cool. I don't know if we ended up setting something up or not, but um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave it open for, oh, I'll just give you guys a little update on me. So uh, once to twice a month, I do an intermittent fast. And so last Sunday, not last Sunday, this Sunday, which was on the um, 20, what, 20th, was my last fast. So what I will do is I haven't eaten since then. So I am going to take a look at my glucose and my ketones and see where I am at so that I can let you know how I am doing. And I'm not grumpy. I'm not like a you know bear with a sore tooth. Although when I do go home and I smell some of that food, I'm really hungry. Why am I doing it? One of my patients asked me, why am I doing that? Um, just because I want to try to cr create some autophagy where I allow my mitochondria to cleanse itself and it give my, my cells a break from insulin being secreted uh, and uh, being able to clean out my cells basically. So I'm going to take my blood sugar. First is going to be um, my ketones. That always kind of hurts a little bit, but um, so we'll figure this out. So I love the Keto Mojo. Um, I'm just gonna figure out where my first levels are at. What's always a bummer, that was the ketones first, is if you don't get it on there right away and then the machine gets mad at you and then says, oh, sorry, you screwed up, it's an error. Um, that's always a bummer. Um, so I'm at 1.7, 1.7, and really, oh, can you see that really good? 1.7, you can kinda see it, there's a little bit of reflection on there. Eh. But it is 1.7. And um, so that's good. Uh, I'm surprised I'm not higher. Um, I, I would expect that I was higher. I actually went for a workout today with not eating. And, um, and then um, now I'm going to take my glucose. So my glucose is... Oh, see, it gave me an error. I didn't do it properly. Um, the keto, what's good about the Keto Mojo is um, the glucose strips are five, uh, $15 for 50. So I don't mind messing that one up as long as I got the glucose one right because that's a uh, the ketone ones, right? So that's a dollar a strip. So I got to make sure I get that on there. So now again, I screwed up because I didn't wait for it to. So now this is where sometimes even the, the professionals now my finger is not even bleeding. So I'm going to do another strip and get that going. And then measure this because I got to see where I'm at. It's my, it's one of my last trips. So let's see. So hopefully you don't take 
three readings before you do it. So make sure that you wait. One of the things that I find is you, people don't wait for the, for the droplet of blood before they do it and then they jump the gun and then the machine gets mad at you and says you did an error. I feel so ridiculed when I get that E sign. It's like you screwed up. All right, so I did it right. So now we'll figure out what my glucose levels are at. 79, so we're at 79 and I haven't eaten since Sunday night. So do I need to eat right now if I'm at 79 and my ketones were 1.7? No, I don't need to eat um, in terms of, oops. All right, sorry about that. So, so just talking about me in general as a case study, um, so my ketones were 1.7. Um, anything above 0 0.4, 0 0.5 is in ketosis. Um, my, my glucose was at 79. And, you know, that's still a little bit high, in my opinion, um, for someone who hasn't eaten since, um, since um, Sunday night. So I'm going to try to go till Wednesday, and I might even go longer. So we'll, we'll do like an on-air work study and show you how I'm doing. I'm, I'm pretty focused. Um, I'm a little hungry, um, but that kind of tells me that I'm not so wrapped up in, in the connection of food. So anyways, just wanted to share that with you guys. If there's any questions on that, I, I, will, I will definitely answer it. Um, I'm doing IF2. My longest was 40. That's awesome. I, I don't think I've ever done 40. Um, but I'm going to try to beat you this weekend because I'm competitive. Um, Adi, I love that name, Adi. Um, hi, Doc. Um, oops, I don't want that. Why is it looking at me that way? How do I switch that around? Sorry, guys. Getting some technical difficulties here. Um, what the heck? Can someone teach me how to fix this? It's that way. Sorry about that. All right. Hey, Doc, why am I so sensitive to supplements? Almost everything I tried causes insomnia. Um, let's read here. Everything I caught causes insomnia. Even foods like turmeric, coriander powder, coconut oil are stimulating vitamins, causes insomnia and anger. How can I recover from severe adrenal fatigue without supplements? I've been on benzo some years ago, and I feel that the benzo withdrawal caused my adrenal fatigue. Also, I can't do a lowish calorie diet as I will cause a crash. You know, it's it's so many ins and outs and what have yous on that. I can't answer all of that, but my guess is is that you you would probably want to try to do some kind of intermittent fasting with that, um, because my guess is is that you're just your cells are not taking anything in, and you may want to go on a guided water fast. Um, it would have to be with a professional. It wouldn't just be okay. Go out and do it. Um, I'd be looking at getting collagen or bone broth, um, something like that, to really get you some some good nutrients, um, some good pink salt in water, um, basic stuff like that. Um, that's, that's why, but I, I would need more information, more information than that. PJ, thanks, Joel. You're awesome. No, you're awesome. Looks like you need to, to make an appointment to get some testing, perhaps, um, testing done. We could, we can, I'll send the link to, um, you know, schedule a 45 minute breakthrough call. Um, been getting a lot of cancellations. I don't, I don't tell you guys as much anymore because it used, just used to make me so mad, but it's, it's a fact of life. So if you schedule a 45 minute consult, make sure that you're serious about getting answers to your questions and potentially for those that are serious about, um, you know, fixing their problem because they're in, they're in overwhelm, they're in um, decisiveness, they're coachable, they're resourceful. And those are the things that I'm looking to try to try to give you people some information on those calls. Connie, yes, love fasting, intermittent fasting, keto on bioidentical hormones, nature thyroid and taking supplements. Husband and I both, restless leg, uh, 40 of my 53 years, also lipedema thighs. My, my not hubby is fine. So, you know, I was reading a, um, uh, that book, The PEO Solutions, and uh, it's a great book. I would definitely recommend it. It's a 500-page book, and I'm going to read it twice. That's how nerdy I am. Um, but it talked about cellulite, and it talked about um, you see younger and younger women these days that have cellulite, and it talked about why that is, is because our, our oils are all adulterated, and they're all, um, they're all treated and heated and, and non-GMOs, non or, or they are GMO'd, and they're, they're, they're 
they're non-organic and they are toxic and and you have to be really you know I've talked about that a lot in terms of making sure that you protect your oils if you become an oil it's called the PEO solution and it's by Brian Peskin and um, it's it's a really great book I mean it's it's gonna change really the way I practice um, I'll have a bunch of videos on it I had to I didn't take any notes I do like a, a once over I just try to read it as fast as I can now my next time that I read it um, I will definitely make a lot of a lot of videos about and it's an awesome book um, hi Linda gonna have any special sales coming up or on any of the tests I haven't thought about it you know um, that took me away from working one-on-one -on -one with people and you know it it was good I, I haven't thought about it maybe towards the end of the summer we will um, Gregory can you explain how safe intermittent fasting is when having adrenal fatigue? Most literature uh, I, I read speaks of eating to keep blood sugar stable and eating protein first thing in the morning. Um, I would, you know, Greg, it's a great, great question. And, and I have, a, um, you know, studied um, exercise physiology and we were taught the same thing. And, I, you know, that was a long time ago. And I would say that those those need to be updated. Um, I think that having small meals more frequently for someone that is um, uh, supposedly reactive hypoglycemic, um, first of all, I'd want them to prove to me that they're reactive hypoglycemic, meaning not just symptoms, but show me your glucose levels. That would be number one. Um, number two, um, my guess is, is that um, you have a lot of other things going on besides um, not stabilizing your glucose, and that's probably eating too much carbs, that's probably eating too much protein, that's probably not eating enough healthy fats. So if you can get into that, what we talked about here, with doing a refuel where you're getting 150 grams, no more. I think that we're not engineered to eat that many grams of, of carbs. We're just not. Um, and I think that um, if that's the case, restriction is very, very key. So I, if you look, I, my, my diet is called metabolic flexibility. It's not called ketogenic diet, meaning it allows for a lot of flexibility. It allows for, for if a lady is on her period and she can do a four or five day restrict um, refueling diet where she's getting more carbs because she needs it. She's um, depleted and she's, she needs more, more energy. Um, or um, if, you know, if you're in the middle of a, of a crisis and you're going through inflammation, then you go on a restriction and you don't eat anything. So it requires a little bit of knowledge it's not one of those things where you can just tell someone, A, I expect you to be in ketogenic for the rest of your life. It doesn't work that way. And B, um, I expect you to be metabolically flexible based on your demands, your work schedule, your inflammation, your activity levels, um, your stress, all of the above. So I'll see if I can answer your question. Can you explain how safe intermittent fasting is when I'm having adrenal fatigue? Um, I think it's safe. I mean, in terms of if you're measuring your glucose and you're measuring your ketones um, and you're aware of your numbers, it's a lot safer than not intermittent fasting and not knowing your numbers and assuming, hey, Greg, if I asked you um, how many calories you're eating today, you'd say, I have no idea. Um, or if I asked you how many carbs are you eating a day, I have no idea. Or how many proteins are you eating, I have no idea. To me, that's not safe for someone that has adrenal fatigue to tell you the truth. Um, so I think there should be literature that says, if you have no clue how many grams of carbs, proteins, and fats you have when you have adrenal fatigue, that's not safe. So that's how I would answer that. Um, but I do think protein first thing in the morning is good. Um, I do think that everyone can do like a 12-hour like a, a fast, meaning I think there's no problems with if you have your last meal at 7 at night, then you shouldn't be eating before 7 in the morning. I think everyone should be doing that that's completely safe and that's how our body is engineered to 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 be to be to be designed if that makes sense anyways i think that's it if there's any more questions one 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 more question um i can answer those otherwise um that's it um again i'll put the link to um doing a breakthrough call with me there's no charge for that um but it is for people that a are going to be serious they're going to show up to the call and they're going to show up to take action they're not going to stiff me because uh, i'm doing this you know nothing worse and nothing upsets me more than you know coming in on a saturday and having someone not show up don't bother set signing up and i know who you guys are because i see you in the group um, and I have a good memory. Um, number two, um, if you're going to show, show up, be, be committed, be decisive. Well, I told you the name of the book, Robin. The name of the book is The PEO Solution, and it's by um, 
by Brian Peskin. Um, and then the third thing was um, you, you, you want to be coachable and, and you want to be open to what you're doing is not working. And, 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 and my goal is just to see if, if I can have value, if I can figure out what's not working and what you want to get and see if I can help you and, and make all the recommendations for you to do that. That's the purpose of the call. Can you do a regular phone call, not a video call? Yeah, I can. Um, but if you're across, you know, seas, international, I can't do one. But if it's um, within the U.S. or Canada, I can do that. And so um, that's no problem. But anyways, um, thanks. Where can I get your email? Um, our email is info at bocahealthcarecenter.com. And I'll put that in the link too. So it's uh, info at boca, B-O-C-A, health like health care center dot com. Last question: Restless legs. Any any ideas? I you know I think of micronutrient deficiencies, magnesium deficiencies, stuff like that, um, absorption issues, um, dehydration, sodium potassium electrolyte balance issues, um, liver detox issues, kidney issues, um, blood sugar imbalance issues, autoimmunities. Those are the things that I think of. Anyways, um, Greg helps as always. Greg, I hope I wasn't too tough on you on that one. Um, and I'm glad that, um, that that was helpful. And you do have a magnesium. I should be the guy in the uh, circus that can, like, you have, like, come up and I can predict, you know, restless leg. I'll say, magnesium. And you're like, yep, good. And, I, and then I would work in the circus. Anyways, that's all I got. I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. My name is uh, Dr. Richard Joel Rosen. I am the Adrenal Fatigue Recovery Ninja, and I look forward to ending your adrenal fatigue nightmare. And Sally, it looks like Sally, you had one more question right at the very end. So I'm a nice guy. I'm going to read what you have here. Um, I crash dieted for 20 years, was a fitness instructor until I could not be... Uh, could not be has fit because of DDD in one second I crashed dieted it for 20 years was a fitness instructor until I could not be has fit because of uh, degenerative disc disease in in 21 discs I started slowing down at 42 doctor said I c it caused my thyroid to be sluggish because of crash dieting and being a, veg a, veg a vegan I have chronic fatigue syndrome, thyroid degenerative disease, and dis dis disease of the joints. I am crashing, I crash diet again, but it seems the only way to stay slim. I am now nine half still on thyroid meds, and they are whacking me out. I am fed up, I am just exhausted. Well, that's going on there. Sorry to hear about that, Sally. What I would say is, yes, crash dieting is not the way to go. You need to be sensible about that and something that's going to be sustainable. So watch this video again where I talk about uh, restriction and refueling and where I talk about getting your, your 0.7 grams of protein per lean pound of body weight and then making the remaining portion healthy fats. And probably the most often thing that I see is people don't get enough healthy fats. They just don't. And so you need to get avocados, um, eggs, seeds, nuts, um, uh, healthy oils um, stuff like that is going to be even animal healthy fats if you if you eat animal healthy fats um, my guess is is that if you're tired your thyroid is sluggish probably eating that way made you micronutrient deficient and even macronutrient deficient so you can't make hormones effectively you can't repair your cells effectively you can't make immune cells effectively you can't detox effectively you can't make proteins effectively you can't make enzymes effectively you can't make hormones effectively you can't make neurotransmitters effectively all those things are gonna have a huge impact um, then I probably would think that if there's a genetic predisposition you turned on the expression of an autoimmunity and now your immune system attacks its own tissues to slow down the utilization of very limited raw materials and now that's called cell danger and that will slow down and cause a vicious cycle and my guess is that's what's going on and depending on how severe and how bad it is depends on what you're willing to do about it. You know, I, I really do think, unfortunately, traditional medicine um, with the acute-based pharmaceutically driven model is not gonna fix someone that's been doing this for 20 years. And, and unfortunately, in, in our today's healthcare, um, if you want you know, quality service for a chronic condition, 
it comes with down to paying out of pocket and then it comes down to well I don't have the money and and that's a that's a sad reality a lot of the times but I would ask you how much money have you spent on not fixing this um, how much money have you spent on lost wages meaning I, I talked to someone today who made a lot of money and has been out of work since since the beginning of this you know 2000 so that's 18 years and let's just say 20 years and you were making fifty thousand dollars that's a million dollars that you've spent already on this so you know um, putting it in perspective you got to realize that the cost of not fixing this is a, bo a boatload uh, and the cost to fix it is is cheap in comparison to the money and the value that you get when you do fix it that you can't put a value on like watching your grandchildren not being the old grandmother that's being pushed around in a wheelchair because they can't get on the floor to play with their little baby granddaughter I mean that's what's the price of that that's that's I don't know how you would put a price on that so if you want to do a 45 minute consult with me then be you know committed to making a change because you know the price of not fixing it you know is is way 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 cheaper than or more expensive than the price of fixing it so anyways that's all I got um, my name is dr. Joel Rosen and my tagline is I am the adrenal fatigue recovery ninja and I look forward to ending your adrenal fatigue nightmare have a wonderful evening